Hello and welcome to another Scardcast Battle Report. The Webway stands in the midst of a field of destruction. The Necrons are sailing from all sides. Will the Drukhari stem the tide or will there be a breach that would lead to catastrophic death? Dark Kid. Hello and welcome for take three. Third, third time's a charm? Third time's a charm. I'm Scarry, your grateful host, and this is John. Hello. Um, we have met John before in the hunt for liquid flesh, where Archon Scarry has been diligently hunting down Necrons, looking for an ancient technology. You're getting close. Ah, uh, he's definitely getting close. But today, a portion of his main real space raid force, mm -hmm. a full strike force of witch cult, has been isolated and is going to be assailed by a lot of canopdecky beasts. All the bugs. All of the All bugs. All the bugs. And uh, you brought a lot of close combat. I brought a lot of close combat because I think you're... With your Nightmare Drakari, I need to screen it. Yeah. And I finally have the bigger bugs, the wraiths, to add a little punch to the mix. That's right. So you got some shooting, got some wraiths, and 27 scarab bases. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So we have a treat for you guys. Let's take a look at the armies, and then we'll dive right in to the battle report. Good stuff. Enjoy. Okay, so this is the board we're playing on. Yes, it is barren. Yes, we. it is by design. It is a narrative battle report. This is the Hunt for Liquid Flesh second part of the story. <laughs> Archon Skari has basically gone in the tomb now. He's, he's hunting down in the catacombs. The Necrons have decided to launch an attack and assail the Webway Gate whence the Drukhari have come from to try and bring the fight to the enemy. Defending the Webway Gate, the Cult of the Red Grief, the Witch Cult, fends off the Canoptech Wraith Scarabs and Legion of Warriors that have been tasked to destroy the entryway. Okay, and here we have 1,500 points of Cult of the Red Grief. So it is a Witch Cult Battalion. One single battalion voted by the Patreons, led by the Warlord Succubus with an Archaic Glaive, a Succubus with a Shardnet and Impaler, a unit of 20 Witches with two Hydra Gauntlets and a Shardnet, two units of five Witches, oh, the sergeant has a <coughs> agonizer. Then in the elite slot, we have five mandrakes and a beast master. Then in the fast attack, we have a unit of scourge, eight chimera, two clawed fiends, nine razor wing flocks, and nine reaver jet bikes. The disintegrator cannon raider and a double cannon venom as dedicated transports. 10 Helions with a Phantasm Grenade Launcher, and to round it all off, a Witch Cult Razorwing Jet Fighter with Disintegrator Cannons and an Upgraded Splinter Cannon. So, a lot for 1,500 points. Getting ready to battle the Ancient Menace of the Necron. Okay, and here we have 1,500 points of ancient Necrons. John has brought ready to battle the Drukhari in combat. So John, what have you brought today? All of the bugs. All of the bugs. <laughs> so we have three squads of nine scarabs. Okay. A squad of six wraiths. You're really working on them. They look really cool. Yeah, they're coming along. Um, a Novak Warlord Destroyer Lord. That's right. So um, Novak, they get so the scarabs and the race get reroll misses and com to hit when they are charged. Do charge. They get charged or they heroically intervene. Correct. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, we have a ten man squad of Nihilek Immortals. Yeah. Nihilek Warriors. 
and another squad of Nihilek warriors that'll jump in their ghost arc. Yep. And then we have a Nihilek overlord and a Nihilek uh, lord. And they get to reroll ones when shooting. If they stand still. If they stand still. Okay, so that's 1,500 points of Necrons. Let's take a look at the mission and the point. Okay, so Maelstrom of War, mission one, cleanse and capture. Three objectives each at the start of every turn. The victory condition, slay the warlord, first lord, line breaker. Uh, so we're going to set our objectives down as per the rule book. Then we're going to go into deployment. Shows you're good. Okay, so here we have it, the... Objectives have been placed. We know the mission. It is frontline assault, so what we call pointy dawn of war. <laughs> um, John got to pick his deployment side because he placed the last objective. One, two, three, four, five, six. Although that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So he stacked this side and then he picked this zone here. Of course, the webway is important, the oasis is important. That crevice is important and then the general area he to stop the drukari beachhead will be of importance so i will start deploying first because john picked his deployment zone and then we shall begin so the deployment phase was relatively simple going back and forth putting things in reserve putting things on the table but my general strategy was to not commit too much to the table he put everything on the board, and essentially, I was waiting for him to make the first move in-game before committing to the board. Okay, we have deployed our forces, and it was a back and forth. <laughs> okay, so, just so you understand what's going on, I put a Razorwing Jet Fighter on the back here. I put uh, nine Reaver Jet Bikes here, a Raider with... Five witches, both my characters. Big screen of Razorwing Flocks. Uh, big, uh, the backfield of Chimera. Two Clawed Fiends. A Venom with five witches there. Beast Pack Master. In the webway, I put the Helions and the 20 man unit of witches. The Mandrakes are in the shadows. The Scourge are in the sky. So I had quite a few uh, things to deploy out of the board. The Necrons have responded in turn by putting 10 warriors in their ghost arc, or in their, is that what it is? Ghost arc? Uh, 18 scarabs, 10 immortals, the two characters, nine more scarabs, the race at the back, and then 10 warriors. So the Necrons did out deploy me, which means that John is getting the plus one to go first. Okay. Canada dice! <laughs> Three. Ooh, with the plus one, we force a reroll. Dun, dun, dun. Four. Oh, that's a seven. That's not Great. going to help me at all. Do I want to try and seize? Yes, you yes, do. Yes, I do? Okay. Mm, let's see what happens. Real time. Yeah. No, that's a three. And with that, the Necrons will go first. John, have a fantastic game. Let's draw your three cards and see what it is that the Necron High Command has ordered you to do. Let's give them a quick whirl. Quick little shuffle shuffle. I think you guys saw me shuffle them on the uh, as we deployed. I do a, like a magic style shuffle back from my magic days. Okay, what do the Necrons get? Mm -mm -mm. Kill something that flies. Score every objective on the board. And this is a Necron one. Kill one vehicle model to get a point. If you kill three vehicle models, D3 points. If it's Titanic, you get an additional three. So kill a tank. Cool, so kill a tank, score every objective on the board, and kill something that flies, which I think I have a few of. Okay, let's begin. Turn one for the Necrons. The Necrons got very aggressive. John moved forward and really focused on the right target, which was my screening Razorwing Flocks. He was able to 
wipe them out completely by tossing a unit of scarabs in there. Not having Vec to stop him from advancing and charging was felt, um, but I knew that I was going to be able to deal with them. Now, he had misdeployed his wraiths, and this would come to haunt him later in the game. Necron, turn one, saw the Necrons advance at full speed. So the Scarabs popped a trait to advance and charge. They moved up, didn't advance too far, but rolled 12 to charge. Everything that could shoot shot at the birds, and then the Scarabs charged in, re-rolling hits. They just murdered all the Scarabs. I mean, all the, they murdered all the Razorwing flocks. So the Necrons have successfully scoured the skies by killing something that flied. They also got... Um, they also got first blood. So that's two, two points to the Necrons. Do you want to get rid of any of these two cards? That one. Get rid of Domination, because it's definitely going to be a hard <laughs> one to get. And with that, the Drukari looking at the Scarabs, charging forth, creating something they have to deal with right away in the way of their entire force. The Drukari, the Witch Cult, now having to react to the Necrons. On to turn one for the Drukari. Okay, before we go into Drukari turn one, let's see what we have been ordered to do by high command. <clears throat> Scour the skies, kill something that flies. Well, mm. yeah, it seems pretty straightforward. Tip for tap. Exactly. Number two, Kingslayer, kill your unkillable destroyer lord. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A big-headed much for the Drukari. <laughs> Number three, hold the line, which I cannot do it in the first turn. Great. Okay. <laughs> so, scour the skies, either killing scarabs that fly, or killing that thing that flies, or killing the wraiths that fly. Wraiths too, right? do not fly. Oh, they don't fly. No. Really? They move like it, but they don't have Interesting. It. But the destroyer does, Lord. Oh, no. Yeah, does the destroyer Lord does. Okay, cool. Okay. You could get both if you I, went for If I d charge that way, maybe. We shall see. <laughs> okay, turn one. So, I had an option here. The scab was right in my face, and the ghost arc was bearing down on me. So I decided to pull away from the wraiths as much as possible, knowing they would do the most damage, and really focus on the immediate threats. The ghost arc and the unit of scarabs that was in my deployment zone at that point in time. Drukari, turn one. So, I had Scour the Skies, Kingslayer, Hold the Line. That I cannot get because it's turn one. I'm going to get rid of Kingslayer because that Destroyer Lord is going to be very hard to get right now. And I did kill two units that could fly. So, I got Scour the Skies as I killed this unit of Scarabs with all this. I used the uh, Red Grief Stratagem so they consolidated back into the transport, the little unit of witches to prevent them from getting rapid fired by a bunch of warriors. And then the rest of my shooting, and I deep struck some Scourge with Haywire here, shot into the Ghost Ark, and with the charge from the, the uh, Reva jet bikes, I was able to knock it out of commission. Barely, barely. I almost didn't kill it. And that would have been bad news for me. But three of the warriors have died. They've gotten out. Um, they're not gonna fail morale. And I failed my charge with this into here, so they're now free. They're not going to be able to. Uh, they're going to be able to charge other stuff and whatnot. But moving on to Necron, turn two. He still has kill something that fly. Uh, kill. What is it? I have kill vehicles. All oh, right, kill a vehicle. So he's and then got a kill a bunch of vehicles. <laughs> yep, kill vehicles is his primary directive, and he gets to draw two more cards that High Command will tell him is the battle for the webway rages on. Advance, get everything out of your deployment zone. Definitely doable with the army that you have. Dust and Ashes. Nominate a Necron character. Score one point at the end of the game if this character is alive and on the battlefield. I think I will nominate my Warlord. The, the Warlord <laughs> with the cool uh, phylactery. So... That's a, a point for keeping his Warlord alive, which is very likely with him, because he gets back to life, which is pretty awesome. Okay, moving on to turn two for the Necrons. On his second turn, John uh, continued to put pressure on me. Now, he did make a mistake here. I feel like he should have focused fire on the Raider. He left it alive with two 
wounds remaining. This meant later in the game um, that was that was a mistake. But the wraiths being on one side of the board, and I had decided to move completely to the other side, uh, just forced the wraiths to have to spend two turns redeploying before they got into the thick of the fighting. And uh, sending some scarabs into the jet bikes was a good plan on the far flank. Necron turn two saw the Necrons basically push forward to try and engage the main body of the Drukhari force as they defend the webway. In the back, these guys have tried to screen out as far as they can to stop the reserves from arriving in this general area of the board while advancing everybody out of the pointy deployment zone. So, they score advance, so they have three points in total so far. The scarabs on this side of the board uh, did charge into the Reaver jet bikes, but I used quick lightning reflexes and mitigated a lot of damage on the jet bikes, um, forcing the scarabs to not re-roll, well basically hit on fives. And the immortals did shoot into that raider, put eight wounds through. <laughs> I'm missing the feel no pain from the Kabatha the Black Heart, that's for sure. <laughs> but with that, the Drukari are moving into turn two. Are you getting rid of any cards that you have in play, John? Oh, I will keep what I have. Okay, which is killing a vehicle and uh, kill, keeping his character alive till the end of the game. So, currently I have hold the line in progress, so I'm going to be able to get that this turn. And High Command has ordered me to domination every objective on the board and area denial to stop the enemy from being close to the webway gate. <laughs> okay, so I have to clear the center of the board and get a point, hold the line, and hold every objective on the table. Yes, let's, uh, let's agree with High Command on these demands and say that it's going to be possible at some point in the battle. On to Drukhari, turn two. Let us know what you think down below. Who, what will happen? What is the critical moment of the game? So this was my turn two. And his immortals and his characters and his a small unit of scarabs were isolated in the middle of the board. I had one turn to try and strike hard at that bit of the enemy. So I put the Helions in, I committed the, the beast pack, I committed my characters to the center, and literally did nothing. This meant that he was able to really swing the game in his favor on his third turn. Dark Eldar, turn two. So I went for the gamble, jumped up into the middle of the line, and I didn't kill those scarabs. I didn't kill those scarabs. I didn't kill the, the immortals, but I did kill the warriors because the mandrake showed up in the forested area of trees. The Venom, Witches, and Claude Fiends have given me hold the line. I got rid of area denial because those uh, the wraiths are going to be getting in involved now. But I kept domination to force him to think about all the objectives on the board. Because if I can get it, that could be game winning. So I'm going to keep it. Um, other than that, I lost six of the Helions in combat on Overwatch. He, uh, John used a very good interrupt to kill a lot of the dogs. He killed six of the dogs. And my Warlord failed four out of four, three up invulnerable saves in combat. So she's got one wound remaining. So, <laughs> so moving on to turn three, you still have kill a vehicle and you still have uh, keep your Warlord alive. And you get one more card moving into turn three. And that card is Recla another Necron one. Uh, roll a d6. If it's an odd number, score d3 victory points if you control all three odd numbered objectives. If it's an even, score d3 if you called all three even objective numbers. So that's odd. odd. So you have to score. One, five. What? That one, that one, and that one. Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> it's like the Necron gods are smiling down on the Necrons. I love it. So take that one, take that one, and take that one for D3 points. Moving on to Necron turn two, uh, three. So the central combat had gone well. Now it was just a matter of mopping up. You know, he decided to move his, uh, his wraiths and his lord into the middle, 
and essentially wiped the floor with everything I had in that side of the board, except for the, the Helions. The Helions were down to two man, and they were really relegated to just objective grabbing for the rest of the game. That was a good play by John. He kind of neutered my ability to really put a lot of pressure on his wraiths and his commander in combat. Okay, uh, Necrons, turn three. three. And most of my stuff died. <laughs> okay, but I still have a lot of stuff left, so I'm still in the fight. What happened this turn? We had the Veil of Darkness, Necrons, pull out this way, thanks to my will be done and rerolling to wound. He did eight wounds to the two Claude Fiends and murdered them. They have pulled back to hold objective five. So he holds objective one, five, and three, which are all the odd numbers on the table. Good math here. So he gets mm -hmm. D3 victory points. Four, a two. Two victory points. And he killed my warlord as well for another point. He killed my other succubus. He killed all the puppies. And only two Helions are left alive. With that. With that. Are you getting rid of any of them? He also got... um. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so he got that one. He has kill a tank and keep his warlord alive. Which are two things that he still has left to do. I'll hold on to them. Okay, he's holding on to them. I have domination on my deck of cards. I have Master the Warp, which I can't do, so we're gonna redraw that there. Psychological Warfare, <laughs> very hard against a Necron foe of Leadership 10. Advance, get everybody out of my deployment zone. I had hold the line, and now High Command tells me to get out of my deployment zone. <laughs> Fitting for the Drukari to send mixed messages. <laughs> okay, so I have two Halions here. Um, and I've still got the 20 witches in the webway. So let's see what we do with that coming into the next turn. So this turn for me was a key turn. It was a turn where I set up my fourth turn. And um, I was unable to really uh, get any points this turn, but it set me up for the fourth turn. So it, it look, might look like a little bit of a weird sort of choice, but I wasn't planning to play on turn three. I was planning for the fourth turn. Now, the target I had to kill were the Immortals. I did kill them. I killed the Scarabs to reduce the mobility of the Necron army as well. There are no more Scarabs! <laughs> Death to the bugs! <laughs> okay, so what happened in my turn? I fell back with the Helions. They had plus two inches of movement drugs, so they moved way back into the back. I killed the Scarabs. The pistols from the jet bikes killed one, and then I killed the other two left. The other witch fell back just in case um, I didn't kill the scarabs and she wanted to survive. The mandrakes jumped into this venom that moved this way and then combined shooting between the 20 man blob of witches that showed up, shooting into the immortals with the plane and the immortals shot in and killed all of the immortals. I even forgot to shoot my venom, but that is okay. Moving on to my next turn, I got rid of psychological warfare. Yeah, out of here, because. It's impossible to do that against Necrons. But I still have advance, and I had domination. I didn't get advance because I rolled, I re-rolled their advance and literally 15 inches like right here, and they rolled a one to advance. <laughs> so if I would have gone a little bit further, then I might have been more aggressive to get out of my deployment zone. But they're stuck right in my deployment zone. So moving on to turn four now. And uh, you still have kill a tank in play. You still have keep your warlord alive in play. Um, and you have one more card to draw, which happens to be Area Denial. Kill those witches. Oh, well, pretty much. Get one point. If you get those witches, you get two points, essentially. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you after those witches die. So this is John's fourth turn. And in this turn, he gets a little greedy and starts splitting up his army. And this is where he sort of made a mistake of leaving his overlord unsupervised in the middle of the board without a wrapping or support of other units. Uh, Reaver jet bikes love it when characters become isolated from the rest of the army. Okay, so Necron, turn four. What a turn. We had the Necron Lord charge in and almost kill my plane. It has two wounds left. It's, it's, it's puttering along. The wraiths went and killed all the, um, killed the girls. So I believe that is going to be, yeah, so that's uh, two points for area denial. 
Are you getting rid of any of them, sir? Mm. Well, I finished. So area denied. I'm going to keep them. Because You're going to keep them, yeah. It's, I'm not going to kill your warlord. That's going to be an extra point there. Deny me a point as well. And then kill a tank, which I've, you got one with one wound and then two. Both of them have two wounds left. Okay, so he also charges lords into here. I killed him in combat. He killed one witch, and I'm I'm free. But they have reclaimed the lost empire, so they have plus one to their saves, and plus one attack for the next turn, making them very hard to get dealt with. I still have advance. I still have domination, and I'm going into my turn four, getting trophy hunter. Uh, my opponent must nominate one objective marker and one character. I score one point if I control the objective marker and or the character has been slain. So, what do you nominate, sir? My warlord must be slain. Okay, which is not <laughs> going to happen. And which and objective? you must... Obtain. Number one, in the middle of the webway. Okay. So those are the two that I have to get for a point. Dominate, advance as well. Get out of my deployment zone. Moving on to turn four for the Drukari. But right now we're sitting at one, two, three, four, five, six... Seven, eight. You should be at eight points. I am at eight points. Eight points to my two points. <laughs> so moving on to the late game. So at the end of turn four, the Drukari have done a surgical strike to gain domination, trophy hunter, and advance. He nominated that objective, so my Reaver Jet Bikes advanced. Everything that could shoot at that lord, shot at that lord, he died. So I control that objective. Awesome. The Scourge got into range of that objective. The Helions moved really far into that objective. And then this raider holds that objective. The Mandrakes moved up out of the Venom, shot at the Wraiths. And then with my last command point, I fire and faded to get out of my deployment zone and on that objective. Meanwhile, the block of witches, after dispatching of the Necron Lord, charged in. And we're able to just do enough damage to kill all that. Just. It was, he failed just enough saves. But that plus one save is really handy. So if you're a Necron player, keep that in your arsenal. The Raised Wing just shot and did a little bit of damage. So with that, I have given myself a chance this game. I get advance. I get one point, And domination is D3+. Plus. Yeah, one. Damn it, that's four <laughs> points. <laughs> so four, five, six, seven, eight. I have eight points to my opponents. Eight points. Eight points. So with a well executed domination, we go into turn five. Now he's got pretty much a free point by keeping his warlord alive, and he gets one more card for turn. Five, and that card is Defend Objective 4, which just happens to be in the Oasis. <laughs> so hold it for two turns. That might be a tough one. However, he would get kill a tank if he clears that tank from the battlefield. So moving on to the next turn, let's see what happens. Okay, and here we have it. Necron turn five. This was the turn that uh, could have decided, could have end the game, you know, and you, and John went for broke. He went for as many points as he could try and get um, at the end of the game. Okay, so, <clears throat> end of Necron turn five. The Necrons moved up, killed the Venom, and killed the Raider. It didn't explode, but the, the witch that I had inside died. So... <laughs> Sweet and simple. <laughs> now he's starting to defend objective four, and he killed a tank. So I have to stop him from defending objective four. That's two points at the end of my turn, which means I'm probably going to have to sacrifice my Reaver jet bikes, which is not something that I was looking forward to doing. But High Command has given me the option to <clears throat> score one point if at least one enemy unit that was completely on or within terrain at the start of the turn is destroyed. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> That's also Warlord, and it denies him a point, so I might, I might really have to try and kill him. Mission Critical Objective. Okay, so which one have they asked me to hold? Six. 
which is the Helion one. Okay, so I get a point for that, essentially. Free point. And the last one, Defend Objective 3, which is this one, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. Okay, so I can start getting that. If it goes another turn, then I should be able to get that one. So with that, we move on to turn five. For the My turn five was quick and brutal. Based on the cards that I had gotten and the cards he had and the opportunity he had given me, I had to try and destroy his lord. Shooting allowed me to bring him down and it was up to him to roll that basic reanimation to see if he'd come back. Okie dokie, so middle of turn five. Very important role. We want to share it with the world. Dun, dun, dun. So I was able to get two models within three inches of here to stop uh, to contest that for now. And then the heat lances were able to get close here. Now I did kill him, but it's the end of the shooting phase. A four plus he comes back with D3 wound. D D6 wound. D6 is like the relic or whatever, right? Okay. So let's roll it. Drum roll, please. Does he come back? No, yes. and he has no more command points. Oh no, Warlord has been destroyed. <laughs> and with that, it is the end of turn five. So we're gonna roll to see if the game continues on a dice roll. And the game is over. Is over, and that is it. We'll come back after with a count and an end game. Okay, and right at the end there, with the death of the Necron Destroyer Lord and me getting two of my objectives, which was secure six and kill a unit that was entirely in terrain, the Dark Eldar squeaked a 12 to 9 victory. No. <laughs> no, we have successfully defended the Webway Gate for the machinations of the ancient enemy. With that, we'll come back with a post-game recap as John screams in terror. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for the game, John. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was tough luck there at the end. I think it was the domination, but we'll talk about that in the post-game. <sighs> wow. <sighs> <laughs> I can't believe I swung that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was that's crazy. Um, well, it comes to show. Never, never lose hope. Yep, that's it. Okay, but there was a key moment in the game where you feel that had you switched it, it would have it would have been a draw. Like it wouldn't have it would have cost you the game. So in the last turn there, I got greedy. I had to kill three vehicles or kill one vehicle and my lord was in the right place to take out the venom and my wraiths were in the right place to take out the raider and i chose to split it instead of just taking one and keeping my warlord safe i was like ah my warlord will live and then he threw the one on the reanimation yeah that phylactery failed you <sighs> it's on camera too <laughs> oh man because uh yeah as soon as he was isolated from the wraiths it was a lot easier for me to use my speed to kind of get in and and those heat lances on the the reva jet those bikes jet bikes zoomed in out of nowhere across the whole table and they just they poked me pinpoint yeah just, no. um those those jet bikes the nine man units with the heat lances are great at sniping characters there's a stratagem that I didn't use called Eviscerating Flyby. It's one command point. You fly over a unit and you do mortal wounds for each jet bike on a roll of a six. So you roll a dice for each jet bike. And against infantry, it's on a roll of a five or six. <laughs> At the point that I was able to use it, you kind of bogged them down. So I wasn't really able to use it in the game. But it's a very good way of sniping characters. You fly your jet bikes over an Imperial Guard character or a tower character, mm -hmm. roll a couple of fives, and all of a sudden that character's gone. Um, <laughs> which is, you know, picks them out from within units. But yes, I feel that that was it. On my end, I feel the turning point was on that fourth turn when I got that, that dominate. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, well, yeah, it was just a four point dominate, which is low end dominate, but still, I, I set it up on turn three because I wasn't able to get out of my deployment zone or get into position turn three and then sprung it on turn four. 
wasn't expecting all of the objective control all at once. Yeah, you know, was, um, I had to pull my Helions back and keep them within range, and I was hoping that by pulling them back, you wouldn't be tempted to try and go kill them. And then I pulled, like, my, my Reaver jet bikes, and they kind of, like, all got in a position to jump on the objectives mm -hmm. on that fourth turn. And that, that was it, 12 to, 12 to 9. It was definitely close. Had uh, the Warlord lived, it would have been a 10-10. It would have been a 10-10 draw at the end of the game. Well, guys, thanks a lot for tuning in to another episode in our cool, ongoing little narrative thing that we have here. Leave a comment down below if you'd like uh, to. I read all the comments. And uh, if you want to give us some suggestions, comments, or you, you'd like to see something, me play orcs or something. <laughs> <laughs> Which, <laughs> um, <laughs> this, uh, this army list was voted for by the Patreons. They decided to make me play all, all witch cult. Today. You're mean. You're so <laughs> mean. Uh, <laughs> they actually, uh, most of them voted for me to play orcs, which was funny because I don't own orcs. Um, but if you'd like to support me on Patreon, check the link down below for exclusive access to the Messenger, the Discord server, all the exclusive videos, and all that extra stuff that we do for the denizens. After all, you are John. You are Scary. And with that, that's scary out.